People have been commenting this entire time. That's your time. You want to get on Facebook. 701, we're a minute late. Sorry. <laughs> Getting set up. All right. I'm going to open it up on my phone so I can see the comments. All right, just getting set up, guys. It's not up there. It's not on Facebook yet. You're talking to people on YouTube right uh, now. Getting it all set up on YouTube. Obviously, we're already set up on YouTube, getting on Facebook. Sorry, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy day. We were like trying to plan our next trip, and we feel like maybe our next trip is not going to happen. The weather. It's been the weather all year. This time it's too nice. We got Jim in, Jim in the studio today. We got the runnings bucket full. Runnings Garmin bucket full of names. It's here. We're going to draw tonight. Oh, yeah, we're drawing for that big prize tonight, Jim. There, there was a prize? <laughs> what? There was a, there was a prize? I didn't know anything about a prize. I wonder how I put this on with my Mad Bomber. <laughs> I'm doing it. Every ice fisherman needs a Mad Bomber hat. That's how warm it's been. You did it. I'm going to put this on the floor for right now. Okay. How's it going, everybody? We're pretty excited to be giving this prize away, but you guys are going to have to hear us chit-chat a little bit. We want to get questions from you guys. We want to hear how your guys' ice fishing season has gone. And then we are going to give away this crazy, crazy ice fishing package and uh, we're going to say it several times throughout the throughout the night as we want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank Garmin, Eskimo, Runnings, Northland, Norsk. I mean, without these guys on, without these guys, this this giveaway is just not possible. And uh, I hope you guys understand that you know these these companies support us, and we appreciate your guys' support and everything that we do here at Fish Addictions. And are we on Facebook yet? Or yep, sweet. So. You know, bear with us just one second. We're going to get things rolling here. So one one thing that we should do before we get going too far is... Garmin, Eskimo, Runnings, North Mute Lynn. that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit of a lag. <laughs> what do you want to do right away? Well, we have to say, welcome to another oh, episode yeah, of yeah, Fish yeah. Addictions, The Real Talk, coming at you live tonight. So this is our first live podcast. We have never done this before, so let us know what you think. We've toyed around with it a little bit. You know, if you guys have listened to our podcast, which hopefully hopefully you guys have, uh, we're just talking fishing. We're just uh, interacting with the uh, questions that we've gotten from you guys and and from people around the industry and really just having fun. We're just a bunch of guys that love to BS and, and have a good time. And tonight we get to do one of my favorite parts about what we do here at Fish Addictions is we get to give away a crazy, crazy prize package. That we do. Nobody wants to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do a, uh, any questions that come in, we're going to try to answer them live. We have a few queued up from our YouTube channel. You know, what, what trips do you guys have left for the season? Walleye, Northern, Closed in Minnesota, but still lots of options, ice available. Uh, one of our next episodes is going to be, I'll give it away. Jim and I went on a Tulabi and, and Anthony and Jesse, we all went Tulabi fishing. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, 
that was more fun than it should have been. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it on. If we got to be total disclosure, Jim and I had a little tough time figuring it out, <laughs> but we were really strong right in the end. Really strong. Really right strong we in the end. We finished up good. We finished very strong, so I'm happy with that for sure. Yeah. Uh, and a, a question from YouTube from John Miller. How soon until the ice is gone? That's what man, everybody's this, kind of wondering. This is a question that we are asking ourselves. Like, oh, total total disclosure, we're supposed to leave at 7 in the morning to go to Fort Peck. And I, got, I know guys out there right now. I've talked to the guides out there. Not a lot of ice, a lot of wind, a lot of hot temperatures. And we're wondering what we should do. Now, we haven't made a decision not to. Uh, if we don't go there, we're going somewhere else. Um, but, but, you know, here's the deal. Like most years we have a bunch of snow on the ice and, yep. and ice will take a little bit of these heat waves. Right. Uh, this year with a lot less snow on the ice, it's kind of a wild card. How is the ice going to react to to what's going on out there? I think my personal opinion is it's going to go fast. Uh, if you look at the 15-day forecast in our area, uh, I don't see anything for highs below freezing. Now at night, we get back in the teens and 20s, which will harden things up a little bit. So we're going to lose it a little slower, but we don't have that snow cover to insulate that ice pack a little bit. So it'll be interesting. I, I and, and overall, in general, we have a lot less ice than a normal year. Yeah, for sure. I need to take this hat off. <laughs> I am sweating <laughs> profusely underneath this. Well, and, and uh, the, two days ago, you and I were scrambling trying to find a boat to see how soon we can put a warrior in the water this year. Yeah, I don't have a boat right now. <laughs> like, it's kind of weird. Most of, you know, we sell our boats at the end of the year and uh, wait for the new one to come. And and obviously with the supply and demand that's been going on this year that everybody's going to be here till like first week of April, I want to go to Lake Erie before that. So uh, we're going to figure it out. I mean, that's part of what we do. We just figure things out and, and keep going. Yeah, so if anybody has a Suzuki-powered warrior that they want to let us bring out to Lake Erie, feel free to shoot us a DM. <laughs> Slide right in. You can even come with. We'll save, we'll save a spot in your boat for you. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun to get people out there. Um, I think it would be a lot of fun to have, have you show somebody what their boat can do. I'd be scared to have Mike show me what my boat you can do. You said something about it's cutting out for people. Yeah, let us know if it is cutting in and out for you guys. Sorry if it is. Uh, we are hardwired internet, so hopefully it's not. Um, two feet away. Nice. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. You have two feet of ice, but normally with two feet of ice, we've got a foot of a foot or more of, of snow or hard pack snow or stuff. On we have some kind of insulating snow layer. In some areas, you guys do. Around here, we don't. Uh, you know, we got, we thought we were going to get on ice really, really early. Uh, some places had a little bit, uh, and we didn't get any snow, you know, and, and even if you do have snow, you don't have the snow. I would say you'd normally have because everywhere we've gone, we've been driving anywhere we want with the pickups and putting the big bite down. Uh, so yeah, so it is cutting out for a few people. Yeah. I'm getting texts now too. Uh, yeah. See the, the Facebook feed is really choppy. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We'll try to get this fixed up here. Is it because what if we pick a winner and say the name and it cuts out at the name and we only oh, say it the one time? No. And we only say it the one time. Are you hooked up to wireless or are you hooked up to the... Well, I'm hardwired. Hardwired, yeah. Are you... Is that hooked up? Technical difficulties here. We haven't had this. We, like I said, we've never done the, the live feed before, so this is new for us out here. We might have to. I'm not sure I like being on this live feed. One of the first comments was somebody telling you to put that bucket back in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what we'll do is we will announce the winner to Facebook and YouTube and then no way. And then technical difficulties, we will have to switch to YouTube. No, Facebook. Facebook. Is it choppy on Facebook, guys? Facebook yeah. is worse. Well, it's it's YouTube choppy. choppy. Oh, yeah, it is there too. 
Yeah, but not bad. I think it's because the wind picked up. <laughs> it got really windy out there. Some people are not having trouble. Some people are. Yeah. I think we just, we're, we're just going to have to keep going. We will also have this recorded and we'll publish it to our YouTube channel and our Facebook so we can watch the VODs later. Unless we restart the Facebook thing. How's it going, Steve? Alan Huggins would like to know if we'd ever go to upstate New York for Monster Lake Trout. Uh, yes. Alan? <laughs> message us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alan, uh, shoot us a message when you can. Um, we'd love to make it out there. Probably won't be this year, and I don't know how much ice you have there, so maybe I'm wrong, but YouTube is way better. So if you're on Facebook, if you guys could go over to the YouTube page, it sounds like it's looks like I mean, some people are saying it's solid. Facebook's yeah. solid here. No problem here. So let's just keep rolling. All right. One one question that we got on our uh, YouTube community post that I, I got a kick out of and uh don't actually have the ability to answer is would we consider taking the giveaway winner out on the ice to demo the products? Huh? I guess I never thought of that. You know, I, I, you know, last year we had the ultimate ice fishing giveaway that was sponsored by Eskimo and we were a part of it and we took them out to devil's lake and fished with for two days on an episode, which was a lot of fun. You know, you get nervous, honestly doing that stuff because you don't know who's coming. Right. You don't know exactly if, they're going to be able to keep up with us or heck, maybe they're a way better fisherman than us. Who knows? You know, we don't know what we're getting into when we do that stuff. And, uh, so yes, I would be okay with that. I think, I don't really know. We would, I think it would have to be predetermined, you know, especially with one like this, because ice is fading fast. We got yep. a lot of stuff to get done in a short period of time. And that doesn't mean, uh, we won't want to go fishing with you, but what, what a lot of people maybe don't understand is, just to get this done tonight, we had to juggle things around just to make sure we were here. We actually, <laughs> yeah. two days ago, we were like, crap, Monday is the giveaway. Like, we have to get on. We have to go there. We And, and it's awesome because we love doing this stuff, but it's it's running all over the place. Ooh, someone, Steve just got done cleaning fish. Ryan, uh, honestly, like, I've never fished Fort Peck, and we were leaving there tomorrow, and there's a slight possibility we're still going out there but with the uh, with the wind conditions the heat the ice conditions all in one uh, man i'm like i'm gonna say 60 40 but i'm probably 80 20 that yeah. we're gonna have to figure figure something else out and i'm yeah. and i'm only i'm only that because i want to go there so bad bad You guys can come fish coho on our boat. Heck yeah. You want us to come fish with you? Like reach out. Like if it works, yeah. that would be kind of fun to do. Uh we we a lot of times we end up fishing with just our guys and we're a small group of guys and and it's fun to go and and fish all these different areas, but get on our Facebook page or even you can message us on on YouTube as well. Uh we love to come fish it if it works out. We get a lot of we do get a lot of invites, but the problem is, is we can only go one place at a time. Yeah. Even though we want to be in five or six places, it's only one place at a time. The timing is the is by far the biggest part. People are asking about the giveaway. Don't worry. We spent a ton of time writing names down. We're doing it the old-fashioned way tonight. We're reaching into the bucket and we're pulling a name out. We weren't going to do this. I wanted to do a bingo it. roller. Yeah, not happening. They're not easy to find. We got the runnings way. bucket. Oh. Runnings and Garmin bucket right here. So someone's going to win a gift card. Someone's going to win a live scope and 450 XD uh, Eskimo ice fishing suit. Now we didn't specify the suit because at this time of year, there are a lot of sizes out of stock. Uh, it's a very, very popular suit. And you're going to win an Ion G2 auger. And a so, Northland package. And a Northland, like a giant Northland package. Like I have it already taped up ready to send oh you didn't even let me pick through it uh 
Are you trying for mid-March slobby pike? You know what? If if we don't go tomorrow to if, if we're not going to Fort Peck tomorrow, we're going to Lake of the Woods for slobby pike for a week. How does that sound? I know he's just loving it. So you guys have both fished in Manitoba, right? Yep. Yeah. What is your favorite fishing experience in Manitoba? Hmm. One of Peg Big Wallace. Snob. Yeah. Uh, See. Oh, yeah. I, um, yeah. <laughs> you knew that was going to be my answer. <laughs> you, that was a, yeah, you knew. <laughs> so when you get north of Lake Winnipeg, I don't, I, it's a whole yeah. nother world, guys. Like yeah. Lake Winnipeg is awesome. But you get up to Wacusco Falls or Baker's Narrows and you're fishing Lakers. And and the the cool thing about it is, is like Wacusco Falls, we've been on big walleye, big lake trout, big pike. If you guys missed that series last year when we were up there, go check it out. I know you can't go there right now, but it's insane in northern Manitoba, like insane. And then you go over to Baker's Narrows where we've been on – Welcome to the Thunderdome from Big Will, uh, Pap and Foose, that 40 plus inch uh, Laker. And then you get on Giant Pike that we got to do there as well. We haven't been on the walleyes, they're there. We just didn't have time to do them. Uh, but it, <sighs> my favorite trip is the Wacusco one just because, you know, you go up, you can't beat any of those places up there. But Brian up at Wacusco, like, he understands his fishery better than anybody I've ever fished with. And that's not downgrading any other place we've ever been, but what Costco is not like that is it's insane. You're, you're sleeping next to a waterfall. Uh, uh, Ryan Ferguson, we are planning a summer video series this year where we will take everybody through the setup that Mike puts in his boat. Yeah, um, I will, I will types. say with the live scope though, like I, I actually set my live scope up so I can move it all over my board. I put it in a track system, but we'll definitely get into that as the year come year comes, uh, the open water season comes to fruition. Hopefully the, hopefully the live feed, we're not seeing that anymore. Hopefully people are still getting it March 10th through the 14th. I mean, that's not out of the, that's not out of the question. What are the ice conditions on Lake of the woods right now? Heidi, it kind of varies all over the place. I know some cracks are opening up and closing and closing some portions of roads up there uh, on the war road side of the lake. I'm hearing like 24 ish inches of ice uh, cracks. You know, the, the lake from all this warm weather is cracked up worse than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to have to work around that a little bit. Overall, ice conditions are seem to be fairly good. Uh, we're actually at, but I would say right now, if you want to go ice fishing, and you want to catch walleyes, obviously, you got to go to Lake of the Woods. Uh, pike up at Lake of the Woods. Otherwise, game fish are closed all over the states right now. Uh, Minnesota, North Dakota is obviously open. Uh, Wisconsin closes a little bit later, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're in the North Dakota area, like in between Fargo and Grand Forks, North Dakota. That's where, that's where we're at. So if you guys are on the Facebook Live, uh, the guys over on the YouTube live say this is working better. Sorry for the inconvenience, but yeah, go over there and watch us over there. That'd be really good. Uh, Utah has ice. BK, with this uh, can potential canceling of our uh, trip to Fort Peck, I've actually been considering flying out to fish the Green River. Um, just because. Oh, clear water. Yeah. Just because I was out there a few years ago and had an absolute blast and would love to do it again. Is that the. Where walleyes are a nuisance? Yeah. Yeah. You cannot legally throw back walleyes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they eat all your trout. Oh. So I saw a baby bro comment. Just want to say, hey, baby bro. Again, here it is, guys. We will be drawing for this here after a short while. We just want to talk, ask, answer questions. We really, you know, appreciate everybody getting on. Share this if you would. I mean, everybody that uh, got into this drawing. Thank you. Uh, it's been a lot of fun interacting with uh, with the people that watch the show and support the show. We got them right here. We've gone through the painstaking that you were 
met all qualifications and and some people didn't meet all qualifications which is unbelievable to me That's we made crazy. it so easy. so easy but before this one gets too far up the comment sections fat pelky i would do a lot of things for a klondike bar <laughs> i saw that what <laughs> <laughs> what do you have in mind <laughs> will you guys be fishing the rainy river once it opens up heck yeah mm -hmm. i love the rainy river i wonder how it'll be though there's not going to be well, the the I, I don't think the rainy's gonna get as dirty as normal. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but the the forks I don't think are gonna smash open and dirty everything up like normal. But then there's also not gonna be probably the runoff and current that that drives those fish up river. So it'll kind of be interesting to see where that all where that all lies too. You know, everything's gonna change. Everything's gonna be a little bit different than normal. With I mean, don't get me wrong, we could still have a giant March snowstorm. Oh yeah, and, and change everything I'm saying right now and. Put it away. But if I had to go right now, with the way things are warming up, things go on. Rainy's going to come sooner than than it is it usually does. We're going to get in the boat. I don't think it's going to dirty up as bad as it has. I love sturgeon fishing on the Rainy River. I love fishing the walleyes on the Rainy. I, uh, yeah, I, uh, yes, we'll be fishing the Rainy. The answer is short. I just want. I I just I've been thinking a lot about the Rainy <laughs> River lately. Long story so longer. I've just yeah. I've just been I've just been thinking a lot about the Rainy River. I love that place. Bill and for anybody else that is wondering, there are one thousand one hundred and ninety nine tickets. Jim counted and wrote all their names down. I did. <laughs> and Twister Taylor, are you talking about um, up in the Parkland there? Because I have definitely considered doing the parkland trip because it's actually fairly close to grand forks i just haven't gotten around to doing it um because i the only vessel that i own that doesn't have a motor on it is my kayak and i don't really want to go up there alone so that that's been my issue so to go with shout out to justin yeah justin's been a fan of this show since the beginning really appreciate it man and and uh i hope you i hope all you guys could win but we can't do that one day one day, one day, one day, we're just gonna have everybody who watches gets a prize, right? <laughs> Got you a dollar. <laughs> you can make them trophies at Apex over there. Oh, <laughs> uh, when you target, target Pico, I, yeah. I absolutely will. Otherwise, shoot us a message on Facebook or Instagram. So, uh, Pike, uh, we use L wives and you know, other dead baits or hot dogs, they really bite hot dogs. So do I. Steve, you just want to get out to the campground. That's where he's. Steve McKeever's my neighbor at the campground on Devil's Lake. He just wants to get out to the campground and start the old fire. Yeah. Everyone gets a ribbon. No, no, no. We're not. Not everybody doesn't get. Wait. No, you don't get a prize for participating. You get a prize because you won. That's the how, way I am, right? How, how great. Oh, dang it. How, he got me on that. Everybody on that. gets a ribbon. No. no. How, how great would it be, though, if we had a sponsor that made ribbon tail worms and we could we could give all of our subscribers a package of ribbon tail worms <laughs> and then everybody would get a ribbon? <laughs> 25,000 you'd have to come up with. Yeah, it'd be a lot. <sighs> It would be a lot. What would you guys want us to see to end the ice season? You know, we're I'm talking end of ice season here, like down the stretch. We've got this week figured out what we're doing. We went out to Pika Palooza yes, out in Puck away. Just like Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> we went out to Puck away for Pika Palooza, and uh, that was awesome. And then now we're supposed to go to Fort Peck tomorrow. I don't know if we're going or not. I guess you guys are gonna have to stay tuned to figure that out. Uh, but two to two miles down the road. Oh, <laughs> uh, Ryan, the Fish Addictions team will be fishing and filming the AIM series this summer. Yeah, so I'm not fishing the National Walleye Tour, and uh, we're going to follow the AIM Walleye series and, and also fish the, the Quest for the Best AIM. Uh, in all the in, in honest disclosure, it just was a better move for me and my family. I love fishing the National Walleye Tour. It's it's so cool to get in the boat, look out, and I might fish an event or two, but I'm not going to fish the whole series this year. Uh, but series has some major competition in it. There is there is no doubt at all that there's some of the best. Mine is the Gold Buckshot. Well, 
you know, Jason, the buckshot is kind of the the one thing, but the I, I've had really good luck with it. How about you? Same. The eyeball Same. spoon. I leave it tied up on something. I thought I was the only guy that nope. liked the eyeball spoon. I guess we nope. all like I it. Got the, I got the purple one tied up on something at all times. I'm a big fan of the punch fly. The, uh, you know what? I really got fond I mean, of not, the punch fly not as well. for walleyes, but no. But overall, he said, right? <laughs> Lake Sakakawea Pike, like I'd love to do that. Uh, we should talk. Um, learned a lot from watching your end, first NWT performance. I appreciate that. We, you know, we put a lot of effort into that. Drake and Robert and I, and and there was a lot of ups and downs, and that's tournament fishing in general. And it's going to be the same in the in the aim, and we're going to do the same thing. Like we're going to get together with a with a couple other guys. We're going to fish. I'm fishing it with my uncle, which I'm super excited about. Uh, my uncle has a passion for fishing bar none, and I'm excited to get on get in the boat with him. So, so before we get too far, I've seen a few questions about underwater cameras and any recommendations that you have around like the four hundred dollar price point. Mm, I don't remember who asked it. I, I like I like the I mean the around the four hundred dollar price point. The Aquaview is it this? It was, a micro, pursuit? It was a micro. 5.0 yeah i mean it's a really good camera that something you can one. shove in your pocket yep. and check things if you're gonna if you're gonna be hooking it up to a hard house oh, there's just so many options out there and i'll be honest i that's one thing i don't use enough of is a camera yep. I, we have them i don't use them enough. not forgot about the camera but forgot about the camera a little just, probably i've always worse. fished too many dirty lakes to even do a camera yeah. Oh, that'd be a lot of fun to host an online tournament. It yeah. really would. I does anybody know anything about hosting online tournaments? I would like to do it. I just I don't know how to set it up, and I have a feeling I'd be the one setting it up. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne, <laughs> I will be fishing the AM Minnesota series. Uh, I'll be fishing all of them. I think as long as I have the boat ready to rock and roll. Um, and we'll be filming every single one of them. So start to finish, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I, I enjoy sharing that stuff with you guys. You get really an inside look at what tournament fishing for me is all about. It's different for everybody. Uh, for me, we take it very serious and, and, and take it very personal. And, and it was pretty cool. If you guys haven't seen the NWT series, I'd go back uh, to 2019 and watch that first year of the NWT. It was pretty, pretty awesome. And uh, pretty cool to share with you guys how it all went, how it all went down, and and uh, yeah, I just uh, I I enjoy fishing tournaments. I kind of I'm, I'm getting too old to play all sports and that kind of stuff. So the only thing I can compete in anymore is fishing, whether I do well or not. No, Willie, William, no camera on devils. There or was lake of, or Lake of the Woods, even for that matter. That's a pretty stained lake. Too. Here, here's a question we get all the time. Have you heard if the Canadian border will be opening this year? So here's what I've heard, and what I what I'm continuously hearing is nobody knows. Um, it's not looking wonderful, but we can cross our fingers and hope that we get a chance to visit Canada this year. I'll tell you that moment that thing opens. Uh, I will be there. I love going up to Manitoba. I love fishing up in Canada. And on Lake of the Woods that you'll get a foot or two, maybe, you know, maybe a little bit more visibility with full sun and everything like that. Um, yes, they work and they don't. I mean, it depends how, how far you want to see, but no, the water stained pretty bad where you're not seeing, seeing very much on camera. So it's any tips that will get young kids hooked on fishing? Panfish. Panfish. Uh, well, set realistic ac expectations yeah. for yourself. You know, if, if you're a walleye guy and you're going someplace like I did, if you watched the family episode on Lake of the Woods, we had snacks, we had movies, we had ice oh, skates yeah. with, we had all that kind of stuff. I, I, I've, and I'm really blessed. I've got my son, Jacob, who is hardcore, like fishing rod in his hand, he's doing it. But then I've got Alex, where Alex, he's interested in fishing. But he's not interested in fishing for eight hours. He's interested in fishing a little bit, getting away from it, fishing a little, bit, and 
you know, in, in, in the end, he'll look at you and be like, dad, I had a really good time. And that's what it's really all about for me. And my little guy, he's just interested in whatever his big brother's interested in. So that works, works really well. I can't um, find it anymore, but there was a good question in here. Who are your ice fishing idols? Oh man. Mike. Like, like for me, I was, I spent a lot of time behind the camera also. So I, I feel like I can learn a lot from him beyond ice fishing. Where like if I have an ice fishing question, I just call Mike or you know somebody else on the staff, and they can answer it for me. But from a content consumption point, I would say Jay, just because I enjoyed you know learning bits and tricks and stuff from him about about camera work. You know, Jay, my Jacob, who I was just talking about, is it? Like I walk in the house and he's watching Jay Siemens do something else and this and that, and I'm like, do you ever watch me anymore? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know, Jay put out a new video. <laughs> Jay, if you would get a hold of my kid, he would crap his pants. He loves you. <laughs> no, he's a great guy. I mean, he could there could be a lot of different people he could idolize instead of him. Jay's a great guy. So catches the heavy spike. The loser donates a thousand dollars to the high school team. Ooh. Jeez, he's getting. Wow, yeah, that would stink to own own a camp up there that you can't even go to. There's just so many, so many questions. It's awesome. The family episode in Lake of the Woods was awesome. Hits home as a family with three boys. One is a fishing addict. The others enjoy being out with dad. Exactly. That's where I'm at with it, right? So, I mean, yeah, laid ice, red lake crappies. That would be a lot of fun, Danny. I'm just out there whacking a few crappies on Red Lake right now. We're just ignoring the wager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just... I saw it. I know who it is. So I'm just over here like. So you're scared of him? I, I mean, do you know who it is? No. I just fished with those boys. It's oh. part of the Grim Boys, and he's up there like salivating for pike. So are you. You spent the last – you deer hunted for a month. Yeah. And then immediately started talking about wanting to catch big pike. I do. I do That's, want to. Those are the two things But that I also want to catch lake year. trout and walleyes and bluegills and crappies and burbot, which we haven't done yet this year, and – what else? I mean, I like catching everything. That's the thing. Like when it when it, when it comes to ice fishing, like to truly tell you I have a favorite favorite fish, it's kind of a lie because I I like fishing everything. When it comes to open water, it's walleyes hands down. When it comes to ice fishing, like I enjoy doing what we do because we get to fish a little bit of everything. We get to go a little bit of everywhere. We get to meet so many back in the day it used to be crappies through the ice. That was it. But later on once we've got to interact and and travel and meet people at bait shops and on the lake and everything like that like i really enjoy what we do and i just have overall enjoyed it all so i'm not as he is a 100 pike if he catches a walleye he barfs in his mouth i get it yeah what about this what about this 100 people in here what if we do did we shut facebook down or what no oh what if we do a uh, a multi-part series in the summertime where he can pick a lake, you can pick a lake. I don't think he touches foot in a boat. Anton, boat fishing? He's going to do a puke emoji great boat. Well, that's now. That's that's what'll level the playing field. Though. Yeah. <laughs> you guys each pick a lake and then I'll pick a lake to be the tiebreaker if necessary. Do any of you guys use flashers anymore? Or is everyone pretty much sold on the pan optics? Um, so here's the situation where we would use a flasher, where we were going. If you're going to fish 70 plus feet of water, the, the Garmin Live Scope works, but I, I appreciate the flasher portion of it better in deep water than I do the Live Scope part of it. I don't own a Live Scope. I, I still run flash to answer that question. Don't look, why are you looking at me like that? I just I'm just taking it all in. Just mean mug. Justin, you haven't done lake trout. Like you're a big pike guy. Like lake trout would give you the here's the problem. Like 
there's not enough cold months a year. I disagree. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, like <laughs> Lakers, when you hook up to a Laker, there isn't another fish that gives you a ride through the ice like a Laker does. Now you just hold on. I've never caught one. I mean, I've seen reels burn up. No, I gotta go tip up fishing for Pike. I know you're oh so upset. We're not I, out of it yet. I'm actually like, like if we don't go to Fort Peck, I'm gonna actually be super bummed because I've never caught a lake trout and I haven't even trout fished in like three years. And now my brain, I just got trout on the mind. Ooh, Tony's got a great idea. Ooh, one person picks the lake, the other another picks, picks two baits, baits, and that's all you get to fish with. Huh. I bet we could get. You those. know we're going wacky worm and bucktail. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sturgeon! I mean, sturgeon are just giant beasts. I don't know. Should we tease everybody again? All the names are in this bucket right here. Well, do we still have Northland batteries we can give away? Northland batteries. Northland batteries. Norsk. Sorry. Norsk batteries. <laughs> I'm looking at a wall. Full of, I've got two walls of Northland tackle in front of my face. Do we and a, do we still have Norsk batteries we can give away? Yeah, we got one I think left. Okay. So we're well, gonna give. What? Well, we about, got a lot of people hanging out. Well, we got. We can get two winners. We maybe do that. Everybody, everybody, go and share this right now. If we get a combined five hundred people on here, we'll give a Norse battery away. I think we gotta make them work for it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So right now on YouTube we have one hundred two. Ooh, I like it. Kitchens and Facebook we have ninety three. If we get to five hundred, we will give away a Norse battery. Is this Canadian or American? I don't know what he's talking about. But if it's a thousand dollars, I'm in and Canadian. <laughs> 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 Ian Beal, what's up, bud? We used to work with him. Oh man, the real deal, Beal. Yeah. Oh, there's so many questions coming up here. I'm like trying to find. As soon as the ice breaks up, two harbors will be open for boat access, jigging for Lakers, and open water is a blast. Austin, message us. I want to do that. Giant Lakers is a blast. Lake Lake Trout's awesome. I mean, if I if I had, we've been trying to do this Fort Peck thing. We had some stuff that we were already obligated to do. We didn't make it to Fort Peck. We're leaving tomorrow morning. As of right now, we're leaving. Literally tomorrow less, morning to Fort Less Peck. than 10 hours from now. Yeah. Should pick one. I know we should. Everybody wants to know. Should we pick? Should we pick? Give it a second here. Our YouTube buddies are just shut as far as sharing oh, yeah, the post. That's right. Look at that. Come on. Lake Trout's on. I could use a little. We're up to we're up to 250. I have not seen the Justin Jenkins teaspoon video. I did see, I think it was Jay Siemens did one where they used a tablespoon to catch pike at some remote. I mean, what is what haven't like Aaron Weeb and Jay Siemens not done. Like they haven't come and fished with us. Well. But no, because I I don't know if this is true or if this is an old wives' tale, but that's how the spoon was supposedly invented. Guy went to have his lunch and he dropped his spoon over the side of the boat and a big pike came up and ate it. And he was like, huh, let me try putting a treble hook on that. Like I I don't know if that's a confirmed thing, uh, but we're that's, from we're from Grand Forks, North Dakota, is where we're from. And then he painted it red and white. Not yes, I have long. caught Barracuda. I caught one two winters ago down in the Keys. That was fun. Alex, Steven, I have thought about doing a smallmouth episode. Hey, I like on, Alan Huggins. Fishermen are supposed to be patient. All you guys that are fishing, patience. That's what I taught my kid forever. Like Everybody's like, pick it already. <laughs> we did tell him seven. Have you ever fished Platte, South Dakota? I have in the boat. I fished Platte, Francis Case, that area. Good morning from Africa. <laughs> I am interested to hear more about that. I'm ready to get back to Minnesota. It must be over there. Ooh, I have not caught monster 
catfish through that. Well, catfish, but not flathead. Where do you, that would be pretty crazy. Is that a doable thing? Uh, How far do you have to go to get to flatheads? I, Specifically big flatheads. Um, I don't know. And do they get ice where there are big flatheads? I'm guessing they're somewhere. Don't they have flatheads in the Mississippi? Yeah, but he said monsters. You yeah. can read the comment. I know. But somebody, somebody, find us where we can find monster flatheads through the ice, and we'll. Joe, we've done a lot happen. of backwoods crappie trips. Might, That's kind of our favorite thing to do. He might tell you Minneapolis. I go to Minneapolis. I mean, I love catfish. What do you guys think of the I'm new lower new limits of sunfish on the on like ninety lakes <laughs> in Minnesota? Really I mean, it's a it's one of those things where it's probably needed. I, I'm thinking they're seeing people take a take a bunch of them out. Uh, people coming back limit after limit. You know, as much as I maybe don't agree with everything that gets done, what? Ian Beal's got it. Lincoln, oh. Nebraska, 50-pounder through the ice last week. What? Minnesota Pictures River. or it didn't Minnesota happen. Minnesota River, St. Croix. Mulbridge, <laughs> yeah, we did catfish down there through the ice. The channels, though. We don't do a lot of tip-up fishing for crappies. It's for crappies, no. Tip-up fishing, like, what, in, in Wisconsin, the they do a lot, like, tip-downs. Tip ups, that kind of stuff. Like, it, it, that's actually probably what I like the most about what we do. Is every time we go somewhere different, somebody's got a different technique, a different way that they do things, which is fun. All right, Ian, sending us a video. Yeah, see, uh, T Sweet says there's uh, monsters in the SIP and the Minnesota River. So, <laughs> oh, that would be a lot of fun catching monster channels through the ice. So we have some of the staffers in the in the chat right now let me ask you guys this if you know about a monster flathead bite through the ice why didn't you share that with us who hurdles up there I we were a team branched oak hurdle that's where you caught that giant one time i, I was there for that pig patrol videos from a couple days ago huh i guess we're just not caught up on our youtube stuff there's a lot of people like I can't keep up with everything that's going on. Like, there's two things going on up here. And I'm like, what, 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 what? So I, I looked at my recommended videos today on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It was like 22 hours worth of stuff that was uploaded in the last day that was like like people I subscribed to uploaded. I simply just don't have enough time to constantly do it. Why does the Grim Crew come to Lake of the Woods with us first? Because they got like this giant crew and they go out and they get yeah, but set up. They're going to make us wait. Well, that's probably because we live closer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that being, I don't remember that being our problem. We traveled to them. We are going to, uh, good question. We are going to do more open water stuff this year. That's part of the reason for not fishing the national walleye tour this year was the fact that, you know, it takes 10 days every time you fish a tournament, they added another tournament. So guys like me who are trying to get other stuff done, plus the landscaping business and stuff like that, like it pretty much takes us right out of it. And, uh, I was kind of disappointed that they added that tournament. I know a lot of guys were happy, but when you're, when you're fishing, it just, it, it was tough for me. Austin, when you're talking topwaters, are you doing like mouse pattern stuff or just like straight up reaction for the cohos? Because I fished like brookies and, uh, or not brookies, browns on mouse patterns. But. Uh oh, Ashton's pick it already. Yeah. Sorry. I, one guy said it right. And he's like, be patient. We're talking. We're, we just want to, we just want to see you, everybody that's in this thing already. Uh oh. Norm. <laughs> no. Norm. <laughs> We're sorry, buddy. If you win, we'll send you a DM. Thanks for coming on, though, Norm. His wife is going to make him leave. So we've made it to 300 viewers Doing this live. One. John's got a good question. Can you talk about the big bite? Uh, I, can, I can tell you this. You know, we've I've, I've fished in a lot of hard houses before, and... What the big bite has allowed us to do is like, even if we weren't able to get on the lake, we were able to get right to the lake that we want to fish, uh, set it down on the landings, uh, or even fish at night. Uh, we just did, we released the crappie vlog. Well, that wasn't even part of what we were there for. We set the house down on a lake that we knew we're fairly familiar with, uh, and Jesse Tintis and, and those guys are very familiar with. 
set it down and we were able to catch a bunch of fish after we were done filming the episode for a totally different species than we had. And it's so comfortable. Uh, we're traveling all over. We able to throw our houses and stuff right in it. Uh, it's, it, it's pretty impressive, really. I, I mean, like we get that. five guys in there. We have a good time. It's got the fridge. It's got, you know, we're running it off the generator. It's And it's home-like. It so is. It's, it's, I like cooking. I, I would much rather grill than eat out every single meal when we go on some. And that trips. is a big difference it's that I was talking difference. about with someone else the other day. It's like when we travel, like we're eating out every it's, day constantly at gas station food. Who hot, which I miss you terribly, who hot. Same. They're open. But Same. I know they're hit open, me but <laughs> hit me up, who hot. Right? No, but like we eat out all the time. And that was part of we kind of just oh, that's just part of traveling. But when you get off a long day on the ice, the last thing you want to do is get changed and go to a restaurant or something like that. So, like the one of the biggest things, one of the, the best things about it is someone's always got cooking duty. It's either Jim or Anthony or myself, but we eat good in the big bite too. We do eat good. We do eat good. We do have like a, an ongoing thing. Like there's a toilet that can be used. I got to mention nope. this. Nope. No, no. Well, you can mention it all you want. <laughs> it, 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 it will never be me. I'll so say it, that. it's, never it's be emptyable, me. right? Like, I have got, it's got, got like a tank in it. Yep. It's got a tank in it. And whoever goes first has to empty it. So like, Three days into a trip, we've all got stomach aches. Yep. We've we're all just like, go, oh, somebody go. <laughs> well, they all have stomach aches. I'll go drill half a hole. Yeah, I was just, I'll just go yeah, inside. I'm, I'm like a bear. I don't care. <laughs> Might not be the woods, but it happens. What's the biggest fish you've ever caught? Mine is an eight foot bull shark, but in up here, it's a <laughs> seventy one and a half inch sturgeon out of the Rainy River. Yeah, well, mine's a sixty-two inch muskie. It's not. Have we ended? Have you have you fished any lakes in Central North Dakota? Yes, lots of lakes in Central North Dakota. A lot of those little potholes. We actually did a two-part series about how we, how to find new lakes out there. You guys see that monster wall that was speared? Oh, we did, we did. and we have been intentionally avoiding talking yeah. about it. Like that was a giant walleye. That hurt and my heart. And if I had a spear in my hand, it would be very hard to. Since it is legal, where I mean, I'm not going to bash the guy for doing it. He, everything he did was legal. So, uh, that was a big walleye. It was. It hurt my heart to see that picture. Oh, I cheered for the dude. I mean, <laughs> he did. I mean, he did it. Like you said, I, it was I, legal. I, it was I, cheered, fine. I cheered for the dude the same way that I'd cheer for somebody for shooting a big buck with a bow. And, yeah. And to answer Joe Biller's question, my favorite way to catch open water walleyes is drop shotting rock points for smallmouth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I really like casting swim baits. That's kind of my new thing for Same. walleyes. I love trolling for walleyes. I, I like the technical aspect of trolling it, changing it up, doing different things. There's so many different techniques to trolling that people don't really realize that when you get out there and you really break it down and you really put all those techniques into into fruition whether it's where you're at in the water column how much line behind a snap weight to lead core and what pound and what how much you know there's so many technical things to trolling that people don't give it you know more people are like oh you can go and troll up walleyes whatever you want but that's not uh trolling up big walleyes consistently though i think that's more right i'm a jigger up guy i really like snapping it especially in the trees because then it's a fun game of if it's going to head shake or not. If you guys want to challenge Winnebago late ice. Yeah, uh, we've been out there with Troy Peterson out to Winnebago several times. It was a lot of fun. It was never late ice, but it always seems like there's always, you guys are always dealing with something uh, on Winnebago, whether it's the heaves or it always just seems like every time I go to Winnebago, there's something you guys are dealing with. I think we should draw. Oh, awesome. Okay. Just kidding. No. <laughs> Are you holding it? Yeah. All right. Oh, just kidding. No, I'll do it. 
Well, the issue with doing this live is I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Mixing it up, mixing it up, mixing it up. Favorite method of trolling crankbaits or live bait? What's your favorite go-to crank? I'm not going to tell you my favorite go-to crank, but my favorite method really is, well, that's not true. The Rumblebee is my favorite. Uh, after It used to be Bandits, and Bandits are still a close second, but I like the Rumblebee for walleyes. I like it on lead core. I feel like my baits do what they what I want them to do on lead core all the time. Uh, and I change my leader. I'm just postponing this at this point. <laughs> drum roll, drum roll, mixing it up, mixing it up. All Hi. right, I got one. Hi from Chirac. That's where the ghost of Chirac is from. Oh god, who said that? Uh Alicia Ann Perkowitz. She must know the ghost of Chirac. She's probably laughing right now. She should be. I've seen that thing on the highway. I have it. Da, da, da. Brandon Jensen, you are the winner of the ultimate ice fishing giveaway. We just did that. Like you just like talked me right into it. So again, I want before we get too far off of this, I want to thank everybody that participated. Without you guys, this doesn't happen. With you guys, we can do more of this kind of stuff. That's really, really cool. Um Brandon Jensen, we will contact you via Facebook and let you know. Uh, you won a 450 XD fish house from Eskimo. You won an Ion G2 auger. You won a Panoptics live scope. You won a Northland package. You run a Runnings $200 gift card and a Norsk battery and an Eskimo ice fishing suit. So we will get a hold of you. Please don't go anywhere. We're having a lot of fun uh, answering questions. Brandon Jensen, wow. We just dug in there and did it. <laughs> yeah, congrats to that dude. That's a that's a hell of a pull. I think we figured it was over five thousand dollars. Roughly. Crazy. Crazy. Well, I, I really appreciate it for sure. Everybody that participated in it. You know, just seeing everybody and, and getting all the comments. It's it's really fun. Please go to our sponsors pages and support them as well uh runnings has everything that you guys need for ice fishing uh or for open water fishing or for your farm or your house or they got pretty much everything you need a tool they got it you need jumper cables they got it you need I and mean, i was building stuff in my shop for ice fishing that I had they had everything we needed jumper packs you know anything uh you know everybody is is running out of ice fishing stuff right now even though we've had like a short season, it's been just a crazy year for everybody getting back into it. And uh, uh, so I want to touch on that. Eskimo. Eskimo is pushing the envelope all the time for all you anglers. Like these guys are coming up with new and crazy ideas that we're lucky enough to get to see. And we're excited to see what you guys think year after year as stuff's coming out. Their, their flip overs have come a long ways. They've got one of the best sleds in the industry. They've got the side doors that everybody wants. They've got the insulated fabric. Their houses are awesome. They're augers. It's hard to find a gas auger anymore. So mm -hmm. if you're a gas guy, a two-stroke guy, Eskimo is your thing. They're propane auger. They're electric auger with the ion, the pistol bit, which has been quickly become every one of our favorite augers. Like it's hard to watch a show and not see the pistol bit in it. You probably can't in the last two no, years. You can't in the last couple of years. And and you've got the the flotation suit. If you guys did not see the float video, I jumped in the water through then fall through the ice. We cut a hole in the ice. I float. I show all you guys exactly what uh what's going on. Uh they float. And actually like my real live like explanation of it is I couldn't explain it because like it's a super weird sensation. It's a really weird sensation because you get in and you expect to have to put a little effort into it, but right away, boom, you're floating. You had to put more effort into getting your feet down so you yeah. can get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I felt so safe. Like I have a different, a different react. I I might take more chances now. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> Fort Peck. Eh. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to pay to pay for the wheeler that goes through with. Yeah, you, yeah. that's the issue. And your gear. I mean, it's 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 pretty awesome. Uh, so you get the suit, Northland fishing tackle. I mean, they make everything you would need for ice. And in the package you get, 
This person is going to get tungstens to lead jigs to spoons to jigging baits to rattle baits. They're going to get a little bit of everything. Uh, so, well, I hope he's not a convicted felon. And if he is, that's not our problem. So, but no, we didn't give him a gun. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, uh, they're going to get the Garmin Live Scope. Everybody knows about the Garmin Live Scope. So uh, if you haven't heard, get out, crawl out from underneath your rock and go look that up because that is pretty awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody that owns them hates them. Uh, it takes a little bit to getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, Norsk battery. I mean, we're getting crazy run times out of our Garmin yeah. live scopes this year i mean we're running two days on on one charge and and this battery right here this orange one up front that's the one that we all use right here so i mean you, you get go check those guys out uh it's it's super light it's really uh, it has been a really great experience we you know the one thing i was a little nervous about was the usb port on the top yep. i haven't had any issues with mine yet at all there's been plenty of snow, plenty of water, plenty of thing. And that was the one thing that I was a little bit nervous about when, when we first got these batteries. Uh, zero issues. I haven't heard of anybody having issues. There may be some out there, but but yeah, they're, it is what it is. Uh, we love them. Uh, I don't think I missed anything. Guys, I mean, please go to these places. Please go to these places and support them. Like, give their page a like, their Instagrams a like if you're there. You know, these these guys are working tough to support us, and, and we really want to thank them for this opportunity. Brandon Jensen, you have won. Uh, pretty cool. So can we agree to do this live again next Monday at 7 p.m.? Do you have anything going on? I don't know. I don't believe that I do. I like the do a contest with no electronics. We've talked about it many times, but, man, it's like – it's you're like, what do you do with your hands? You know, I mean, I don't know. It's like <laughs> one of those situations when you lose your electronics. Like, I what was it the other day? We were fishing and I had something screwed up and I couldn't see it. And I was like, I basically threw everything up in the air. We were we were this close. We were this close to a raw throw. This, I don't know if this is gonna still be live when I come back, but I do need to excuse myself. Yo, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> If it's going to be live still, uh, awesome. If not, thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out. I think we'll still be here as long as there's people but, here. Yeah, not skinny enough to do this crap. Dude, <laughs> love my pistol bit. I already had a few friends buy one. Uh, the pistol bit is amazing, guys. If you haven't used it, if you see us out on the ice, stop us. Ask us to use the stuff. We'll take a look at it. If, uh, if you got a Garmin uh, Pan Optics Live Scope question, uh, we'd love to try to be able to help you. I, one thing I like about the live scope is the fact that we're still learning the capabilities of that thing every day. Uh, <laughs> it, it's crazy the amount of gear that we do take. In fact, we make an effort to try to be like, well, if you're going to bring it, I'm not going <laughs> to type thing. You definitely have to communicate, though, because you end up out somewhere and Nobody brought their auger because everybody else was bringing their auger. Running store is the best ice fishing gear store. I agree, Eric. They got a little bit of everything. Uh, the weird, quirky things that you're not going to find some places, they might have it. <laughs> John, <laughs> <I> keep pulling. <laughs> uh, what kids uh, kinds of rods do you use in the summer? I've started using the JT rods and been very happy. Uh, I've used a little bit of everything in the summer in fact uh i actually have my own line coming out with savage this year uh or a walleye line coming out that i've helped uh get in order and i'm really excited to use those but that jt black rain has been one of my favorite casting jig wrap rods out there very happy with it the opinions on the new northland snap jig you know it has its place uh i think uh I, I like it shore fishing. I think it catches quite a few fish. Uh, I, I'm more of a, I don't know. I haven't got to fish it as much as, as I'd like to, so I don't have a lot of comments on it other than I think it's going to be very effective. In a lot of areas where you'll cast a uh, jigging wrap and that kind of stuff, I think you'll be able to cast that too and be very, very effective. It's a hot mess from here. Yeah, this studio is not built for skinny people. 
Justin, uh, the live scope in the boat. I haven't found anything that I'm like super, super happy with yet. It's all kind of clinking clanky and moves around. I've, I've actually ordered a few things last night to, uh, to try new things on my boat. Um, so Andy, Hey Andy, how's it going? Another, another guy from the, another, another one of my neighbors out at the campground on devil's lake. What do I do with my hands, Ricky Bobby? <laughs> Let me prototype your new line of gear. I mean, try to hook guys up. You know, let's get it going first. It's not here yet. Everything's always held up in customs and that kind of stuff. When that new rod comes out, trust me, you guys will be seeing. We got a we have a trolling rod coming out, a 10-6 and an 8-6. We've got 7-3 medium light, medium fast, medium lights fast. We've got seven foot. Uh, we've got six three. I, I'm a vertical jigger guy. I like we get the jigs, jig heads. I like a six three, kind of a shorter rod. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got rods tailored to pulling spinners uh, with bottom bouncers, that type of stuff. Uh, we've got a lot of things coming out, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to share it with everybody. We still got a hundred people between the two of them, so let's just keep talking. Uh, what? <laughs> that sounds like a rough day, Cookie Monster. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I uh spring fishing or fall fishing spring, spring. probably because I'm so excited to yep. get in the boat and then in fall fishing I'm really excited to get on the ice so we're like preparing and then fall fishing like a lot of it gets cut short because of deer hunting I'm such I just love deer hunting so much that I kind of not I mean I, I hate to say it but I kind of like let it kind of slide a little bit probably more I, than i should well 50 degrees is a lot nicer in the spring than it is in the fall too after a summer of, of all the heat nobody wants to get wet when it's 45 and windy i have never fished the casino cup it was a tournament i really looked at hard last year and just didn't have the time to do it i think it depends on what i'm fishing for in the spring or the fall hmm. there are very few things that i enjoy more than fall smallmouth fishing and yeah, but you're not a big deer hunter I know, but it's not my fault. I mean, that's, I mean, you pick your own addictions to an extent. Absolutely. Could be making you eat. The I still heart. keep going back to that. No, the raw heart monster. tasted good. Who in chat has eaten a raw deer heart? <laughs> like, legitimate question. Like, I, I have. made my kids do it. I told them that I did it and then they ate it and then I felt bad that they did it and I had never done it. So then I did it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing to Thor. I've, I've done it. I've done it good. He I told that thing like an apple and i actually like i mean i thought about going in for two you should have i know especially since, bold move. especially since i screwed up and i did not do a good job preserving the heart so i couldn't make heart and onions are we live on instagram too no just facebook and youtube tell thor he dropped the ball on that one how is that possibly my fault because <laughs> you set this all up <sighs> uh justin you are correct smoked deer heart is much better than raw oh like but we ate every heart like the night that we shot a deer this year. Like in camp, like if you shot a deer, the heart got cooked. And there was people like, I don't like heart, but they all everybody was eating the kids. It was like such a hit with the kids. Steve Rennell has been eating neck meat lately. Have you done that? Yeah, for sure. Neck meat? I cut neck meat. Not like time. not like fry it up, but put it in my sausage. Oh uh, well, he's been like you can roast it too. Roast I mean, he's been doing some weird I mean he I mean he's a significantly better cook than I am, but he's been doing like some cool stuff with it other than yeah, like he, he also has a steel gut. Yeah, dude he, eats some stuff. Eats Joe, what aim stops are you most excited for? Uh I mean Malax is gonna be fun. The crazy thing about Malax that week is it's gonna be a very, very busy, crazy week on Malax. So I don't know how that's all gonna to shape out because you got the H to H up there, you got Quest for the Best, you've got MTT the week before. You've got, I, I mean, there's like six, five or six tournaments in like a span of 10 days. So pretty crazy. I wonder if Brandon Jensen, I have not seen, he must not be on here right now. Should we pick another one? No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. You didn't have to be present to win. The, uh, the aim event that I'm looking the most forward to as somebody that's going to not be there as an angler, but as a spectator is the St. Louis event in Duluth. Oh. Which that's, I think is the one you're looking the least for. Yeah, that's to. probably the one I'm least looking for. I guess because I've never fished it. I mean, it's fun to go up there and do that. But Steve gets it. The raw, the raw bite. 
I don't know what the Swamp Donkey is. Do you know what the Swamp Donkey is? As far as I know, that's a buck. Marvelous. <laughs> Marvelicious. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Because I think, I think the Swamp Donkey is, is. Ooh, the live Norse winner. Alan, I don't know if we're going to get there tonight, so let's let's do it this way. Let's say, so next Monday, I don't have anything going on. I don't think you have anything going on. Do we hunt for a waterfall? Yeah, absolutely. My brother's like, I don't know what I got going on, Thor. We don't even know where we'll be. Yeah, we don't even know where Can we tell yet. people at 7 p.m. on Monday, next week, a week from today, that we will do another live podcast. And if we get to 500 viewers, we will we will – we will give somebody in chat, not even not even a drawing. We will just pick somebody from chat, and we will give them a Norsk battery. If there's from five tonight, no, no, next week, a week from today, yeah, so they can they can tell all their friends because we got to get to 500 viewers. Yeah, we will give them a Norsk. We will give somebody a Norsk battery live. Oh yeah, the the that's the bait shop that goes down by the launch. If I'm if I'm right, the Swamp Donkey. Where's the sauce? You missed it, man. We just gave it away. Brandon Jensen won the $5,000 ice fishing giveaway. Oh, I would love to get on an early bird hunt up, you know, up in Manitoba. That'd be a lot of fun for sure. Keep us in mind. Shoot us a message. You know, if that's the other thing, if you guys want, I mean, we love fishing with people. So, I mean, if you guys want send us a message if it works out uh i just uh love to try to make it work you know i mean we can't make everything work but if it works it works and if it doesn't it doesn't and i hope you understand we have people get uh, actually get upset with us twister tail adventures <laughs> trout in manitoba's parkland and super early season waterfowl like You guys got any more questions? We'd love to love to answer. We'd love to see open water episode of breaking down smaller 500 acre less lakes for walleye. That's a good idea. Uh, uh, definitely, we had a ton of fun doing that for the perch stuff, and, and I don't see any reason why we couldn't do it for open water as well. Oh, Jasmine's going to be here at 4 a.m. again next Tuesday. Huh? I think he might be the dude from Africa. Yeah. Oh. Oh, a legend has it. My local lake has a limit on perch. Not sure if you guys have fished it, but I would uh, put our perch and walleye up against Devil's Lake every year. You boys should come. Again, send us a message. Yeah, John, hit, <laughs> hit Mike up on any of his Season social media accounts or any of the Fish Addiction stuff. social media accounts, and we will uh, get into that. Fish cheek meat. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, our local chef for the Fish Addictions, is always on the old cheek meat. Uh, who won? It was Brandon Jensen. Brandon Jensen won the prize package, so we'll get a hold of him and go from there. Late season walleye tips when the bike gets tough. Uh, I mean, slow things down a little bit. You know, we saw for myself progression. Uh, we start in the spring and we start really slow. Let's say we go to Lake Erie. We're trolling at like 0. 0.9 to 1.2 miles an hour for the most part. And we, as metabolisms get stronger, fish get more active. We go, we can get faster presentations. We can speed things up as the water cools off again start slowing things down a little bit there's a lot of times where i'll lay a lindy rig with just a minnow on the bottom and just let the minnow do its thing and let the fish do its thing and sometimes that's super effective kind of slow things down in the fall do we have anything else i can give away thor just wants to give everything away tonight why don't you just give the whole office away can i design a new one then Yeah, we were always we we've had internal discussions on Lake Winnipeg. Like, where's the sauce? What what is the pressure like on Lake Winnipeg this year? Without all of us Americans being able to come up and fish it, uh, you're things. saying it's a little tough. <laughs> you're saying it's tough. 
that's a that's an internal discussion we've had amongst each other. Uh, it's kind of something very interesting, something we've talked a lot about. Alan, you can have it. Yes, Joe Biller. No. Do a mustache with me. Um, John Miller, you can send them to us on Instagram or Facebook. Um, also, otherwise, I mean, Twitter. I mean, pick a social media account. We have them. Uh, you can find me on, on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. We'll take messages there also. Uh, it doesn't have to be through YouTube. Or you could do it through my personal um, YouTube account, which is just my first and last name, Thor, T-H-O-R, Skoy, S-K-O-E. I'll take a message there also. And Joe, we'll, that was for you too. Because I didn't even say hi to Thor when I saw him tonight. I saw that <laughs> damn mustache <laughs> and immediately stepped into him. Nobody thought smallmouth killer Chris Zaldane like I did when I did it. All right, no. fine, fine, <laughs> whatever. Yo, okay, this mustache was supposed to be paired with a mullet, but... I'm sitting here next to a guy that is damn near bald by choice and somebody that is bald not by choice. Not by choice. And they don't understand how hard it is to get a haircut on a Monday. <laughs> no, but we also understand how to grow facial hair. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's not it, bro. No, no, no. <laughs> Your dad's dad's dad knew how to grow, grow facial hair and oh. you just get to wreak that benefit. Thank you, great Boy. grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> My genetics do not come with full beard. Unfortunately, I could have left the neck beard and shaved the mustache. That would have been better. It wouldn't have. Trust me. Because at least this is funny. That you would have just been like, that's sad. Uh, Kipper, yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube, um, Instagram. We are on all kinds of different platforms. The Carbon TV. Um, there's what, six of them. Yeah, six there's Brandon Jensen. Them Yeah. Brandon Jensen. <laughs> you want to tell him the good news? <laughs> you won. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has said anything to you, but late to the party, fellas. <laughs> we were worried about you. There's a lot of things people are trying to get us to redraw because you weren't alive anymore. I mean, there was all sorts of things going on. So several but, people threatened to steal your identity. <laughs> yeah. Wait. <laughs> I got friended by three new ghost accounts. <laughs> Dude, you won. Brandon Jensen, you missed it. I can't believe you weren't on here live. But we didn't say you had to be here live, but you won the package. Uh, so I wish I could see his reaction. Also, Brandon is one of, one of 14 people that took advantage of commenting on another spot to enter twice. So, nope. guys... During pays off. It does pay his off. Name was, that means his name was in there twice. Yeah. During during other content that we put out during big giveaways, mm -hmm. we provide people with the option to enter more than once. So keep that in mind. What other good questions do we have? I will take the live scope if you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> beside himself, I would be too. Join the chat and find out you won five grand worth of stuff. <laughs> That's a hell of a way to come into the show. Well, we appreciate Again, I, we want to thank everybody that was a part of it. I know we don't have a lot of people on here yet, but we got runnings. Again, you can get anything you want at runnings. You can buy pretty much all the stuff that we won here. They got a $200 gift card. Northland Tackle Box. You got a Norse battery. You got a Garmin Panoptics Live Scope, you've got a 450 XD, you've got an Ion G2, and then you've got the Eskimo Ice Fishing Suit. Brandon, uh, now that you're on, we'll tell you, Thor will send you a Facebook message to get all of your uh, information and everything like that, and we'll do our best to get out, out to you as soon as possible. Uh, so hopefully you can get it on the, on the uh, ice yet this year. Thor, come fishing with me, Average Joe Fishing 2 on Instagram in Minnesota. I'll shave my beard of a year and a half into a mustache with you. <laughs> Send us a message. <laughs> I'll, I'll come fishing with you, but I won't make you shave your beard. That's what? That sounds voluntary. I, I know, but so was my mullet. And I'm going to be honest, I could have gotten a great clips today, and I didn't. You can go to my house, and I will give you a mullet. I don't trust you to give me a mullet. 
And Mike gets to shave my head when we get to 30,000 subscribers. So please get us to 30,000 subscribers. I will shave his head live on The Real Talk with Fish Addictions TV. Or it's Fish Addictions. See, we went back and forth on that. It was like Fish Addictions TV, The Real Talk, or The Real Talk with Fish Addictions TV. Thor wanted it. Fish Addictions TV, The Real Talk. I didn't care, so we went with Fish Addictions TV, The Real Talk. That's how that got to there. That is how it got to there. I will pay your bail money. (laughs) Oh, boy. Uh, but no, I, I am not gonna. You know, you know what? You know what? Yeah, send me a DM on Instagram. We'll set something up. We'll rock mustaches. I don't even care what we're catching. It'll work. What's your favorite rod length in general to fish with? <laughs> Open water, a seven three medium fast. Uh, on the ice, I'm a thirty eight inch guy. Same. Seven six, medium heavy. 60 pound braid with a frog on the end. Even with how much you like catching walleyes, you know, catching largemouth bass on a frog is your favorite way to catch fish. <laughs> Literally, nobody gets mad at that bite. <laughs> that's my favorite way to catch bass. <laughs> like, that's the only way I'll fish them. <laughs> no, you do it with a spinning rod. Whatever. I like this ball guy. Care. Guys with beards catch more fish. Yeah, but guys with stashes catch more girls. Yeah. I mean, Jim's basically married, and I'm married, so yeah, you can have those. You can have the girls nowadays. Yeah, all the Wiggy Sevens you can handle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so please, everybody, if you're still on, you're still paying attention to what we're doing. You're obviously having a fun time with us tonight. Please go and and definitely support those these people that were part of this uh, this giveaway. It's really cool. We'll put another one together. Uh, you guys keep showing the support that you guys have. We're going to put something crazy together, probably for a spring open water type thing. Once we get rods in, we'll put something crazy. Thor wants to give away the big bite ice house. I do. I, I do. Mean, I do really want to give away the big bite. Thor's like, let's just, you know, let's let's finish using it and we'll give it away. I'm like, everybody's like, yeah, whatever. This the the big bite giveaway would require help from all of our viewers at a hundred thousand subscribers. I think I can talk Mike into giving away a big bite every year. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh, there was a lot of questions on the big bite tonight. I, if you guys haven't seen the big bite, go back, take a look at it. We've been traveling around the ice belt, staying in the big, bite. we maybe haven't fished out of it every episode because it definitely early on when we didn't really have the ice to, to bring it out on, uh, we did fish out of it several times. We had the family episode in it, but we've been staying in it on every single episode. We've got over 6,000 miles on this house already. Uh, at, so if there's a testament to something, I don't know how many permanent ice houses have traveled 6,000 miles and taken the abuse that we've given it. It is truly something crazy, uh, and, and it's held up tremendously. Those guys over there are are awesome and uh every, every place we go everybody's got to come in and see it you know we were at pika palooza there's two three hundred people out on the ice and people are walking in i just want to see the house just want to see the house you know and uh we're we're in north dakota people are coming in we're up at lake of the woods people are coming in it's a, such an eye-catching house and they just do an awesome job my favorite part is, i mean i love the whole house but i love the windows on that house for some reason every time you look at it, they're just like nice and clean the no every, frame the no frame windows are like pretty cool I don't get a lot of moisture build up on the windows inside. We've got it so we can run the four wheeler straight in because we've got the toy hauler door. And uh, I didn't blow the tire on the big bite, Robert. I blew it on my enclosed trailer. And I second a musky episode this year as well, Ryan Ferguson. I believe that'd make you at least a third. Ryan, there was a couple of years ago we put 22,000 miles on for ice fishing. We just weren't able to do that because places were so crazy this year that, I mean, we put more than 6,000 miles on ice fishing this year, but that's just pulling that house we put 6,000 miles on. It's actually wild. I was writing up a big bite testimonial today because I love the house also. And I remembered you saying that in a video. It's like, I, I don't know if that's true enough to put in there. It's a lot of miles. I know. But remember when we first got it, I was like, I'm going to track every mile we run with this thing. We're over 6,000 miles. That's wild. The real Thor wouldn't grow a mustache. 
<laughs> yeah, the real Thor could grow a real beard. <laughs> Damn, give me a break. What's this dude's real name? That Anton? Anton, Anton, oh, yeah. Anton yeah. Anton, I'm done trying to convince Mike to catch Big Pike on camera. You keep <laughs> no. giving me shit like this. Come on. Do you run any other boats other than more? I have a, and then my, I have, my son has a little aluminum six, uh, 14 footer with a 25 Suzuki on it. Then I got my big warrior. Uh, and then I like, uh, I fish mostly out of my warrior though. I'm very comfortable in that thing. What's your favorite part about running your Suzuki motors? I should have not shown you a DM and asked you a question at the same time. You don't have to answer that. Just say uh, yes or no. No. Uh, well, there's a different one. That yeah, maybe. But anyways, what? But what's your what's your favorite part? Because I'm looking at repowering my old bass boat. And oh, I sent a message. Or don't don't look at that one about the kayaks. Mm -hmm. Where? Well, because it's just not gonna happen. Am I ever gonna switch to a tiller? Man, like I fished the <gasps> state championship in a in a 2090 last year, and I was honestly like very impressed. My uncle has a runs a warrior 2090, and uh we were in some pretty nasty stuff for that tournament. In fact, my back is still cracking from it. Steven. The like Troller's Steve. Bible? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I everything to your advantage. I just think that trolling does gets a bad rap. Like, people are going out there and just, oh, it's going to troll walleyes. Yeah, You're well, going combine in for walleyes. Com yep, put down the combine. Let's do it. Well, I don't have a problem with it. I'll combine all day. I don't. It's I not, run one rod at a time. It's not combining, boys. <laughs> There's a lot of technique to this. Don't you get... Whatever. I'm... I'm butthurt. <laughs> Steve. No, I'm not going to switch to a tiller anytime soon. I do love the tiller. I think Steve's got a better chance of getting us all into a float tube than a yak. Joe, I, I, I do I reference. I do reference the apps, but I, I feel like I kind of, I don't know. I find I kind of feel like I know where my baits are at now, but any episodes on TV next season? No, we're not doing TV. We have, but we, we, we shouldn't we say aren't we aren't doing TV. TV. We're doing Fox Sports, where we've been for years. So we're on, we're on Carbon TV. We're on Waypoint TV. We're on KO TV now, which is a new one. We're on Outdoor Action TV, uh, and all those are like if you have Roku, if you have all that kind of stuff, we're there. We actually just got voted one of the four best shows on Carbon TV. Just we just found this out today, actually. It it wasn't even a vote. That's a straight up rank. Those are facts. That's not even opinion based. We were in the top four most watched shows on Carbon TV. That's just facts. That's not even. No, they didn't even care whether or not people liked it. <laughs> Nobody voted for that. That was facts. We were the fourth most watched show. Trolling is boring, but it freaking works. Staple technique for a reason. Uh, yeah, I would say that trolling is not the most like out there, and that's why I'm really trying to get into like casting swim baits, uh, cat. I mean, just hard baits, jigging wraps, that kind of stuff. Pulling a spinner with a crawler is okay. More boring. Uh, hand. Yeah, I don't know. it's uh, it's my favorite way to walleye fish. Is pulling a spinner with a crawler. Jim can attest to this. Yeah, but it's it's one of the only ways to get him to walleye fish. It is one of the only ways to get me to walleye fish. It really is. It is the most relaxing slash rewarding ways to catch walleyes. Joe, we actually are like in the process of doing a video, so I'm not gonna go too in depth on that. But there's really like a lot of different techniques and a lot of different reasons why I run different types of line. We could talk about this. Could be a half hour or longer top get topic in itself i change line on my open water rods more than most people and uh we're gonna national try to make walleye it into tour, a five minute video or less well that's that's the one but, reason i fished the national walleye tour was because you learn all this stuff you learn why the reasons and why it pushes you to different to different lengths out of your comfort zone it pushes you to understand these different bodies of water where if I wasn't doing that, we were fishing the same bodies of water all the time, which is fine. You get to know them. But 
that's what I love about tournament fishing is it just pushes you to figure it out. And that's, that's really cool. I, any, anybody that doesn't tournament fish in the summer, you don't have to be this great angler to fish these tournaments. Just be a part of it. You're looking over me. Yeah, I'm doing this. Josh Beasel. I don't know if I'm saying your name right or wrong, but I have a Garmin hat, an Eskimo hat, or a Suzuki hat. Who's, Which where, one do you want? Where are we at here? here? He's been here the whole time. He's a top fan. I want to give him a hat. Which one do you want? Oh boy. Garmin, Ion, Eskimo, or Suzuki. The choice is yours, sir. Send me a DM. Either to Fish Addictions or to my personal account. John Miller, the most memorable moment on the NWT. It have to been. Oh, I prefer the 30 minute video over the five minute video on fishing line. Yeah, me too. Only fans? <laughs> Thor, I've been dude. No. Thor has one. Thor has one. Oh boy. Anyways, I want to go back. Up. No bullshit though. I thought about signing up for a fish addictions only a fans <laughs> only fans account today. Oh, they took it away. We we were gonna I think that's YouTube censoring. I thought about setting up an OnlyFans account for fish addictions today where people are gonna pay to see pictures of Mike with fish. Yeah, right. No nudes, just pictures of Mike with Most fish. Most memorable moment on the NWT on. had to have been after a rough first season, uh going to Lake of the Woods and a place that I'm fairly comfortable with, but I, I get out there. And we're being filmed and being chased by a camera boat that day. Get out. We, I had a, an, an absolute great co-angler. And let me tell you, that makes a total difference when you're fishing the, and the NWT, your, who your co-anglers are and, and the, how they can help you and, and help keep you grounded. Uh, but we put baits down. I turn around to like set, set the speed to exactly where I want it. And boom, broad buckles over. So if you're familiar with Lake of the Woods, it has to be we allowed one over and four unders, which it under 19 and a half, one over 28. First fish comes in as 28 and a half inches. We were able to call in this tournament. So I put it in the live well and I put the rods back in and, I, and the camera boat shows up and he, they're like, anything yet? And I opened up the live well and I took out this 28 and a half to show the camera. And no more and if you watch that episode you'll see this exact moment i'm lifting it out of the live well to show the camera and my rod on my side buckles and i throw that fish back in the live well and barely catch my rod like in the rod holder i mean it felt like it was going to come out it obviously didn't come out and i get that fish in it's 29 and three quarter like it's like <gasps> half hour half hour and i looked at my coin i'm like Holy crap. Like this, <laughs> what the hell just <laughs> happened? This is the biggest stage in walleye fishing. And we're, I'm laying here like, what? Like there's going to be 70 or 60 guys that don't catch one of these fish. We just caught two in 15, 20 minutes. That was so awesome. And it was all the way from there. You know, I want to disclose something. We were actually talking about this the other day. When you go back, Go back and watch those episodes because they're really cool. But like in between Devil's Lake and, and Lake of the Woods, I did this big speech in my shop where it's just like you feel like you want to give up. This is maybe actually the most memorable moment because you guys get to witness me talking myself into continuing to fish the National Walleye Tour. Like I literally grabbed a camera and I walked in circles in my shop half in tears because you try so hard and things don't work out. And I know it's tournament fishing. And it's not always going to work out for you, but you, you guys literally get to witness me talking myself into continuing to compete. And it was something that uh, I will never forget when I watch it. The hair stands up in the back of my neck because a lot of people thought I actually filmed that after the championship. But what people don't really realize is that was filmed like in between. And, and I was going to I was going to be done. I was just going to say, no, I'm just I'm not. I just I don't I don't know. I was giving up. And I, and I didn't, and that's to me, that's probably my actually my my favorite moment of it. So it's lagging really bad now. I think it's because my computer switched Wi Fi. One second, making it look easy. Ross, hello. What's up, Ross? Picture of your StarCraft is still one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. I just saw Ross today. Ross, we might be coming up there tomorrow, buddy. We have not fished for big rainbows. 
I have tried and failed at fishing for big rainbows. Man, Brandon, I don't have a rod that if I've got a walleye rod, I'm years we fished 13 fishing which is a which is a good company and a lot of the guys have have their favorite rod as one of the 13 fishing rods but this year i've really taken upon myself to to try a bunch of different things and i'm still i have some jt rods that i absolutely love i love snaring fish those snare rods are incredible uh so i will take a snare rod pretty much everywhere i go Let's let's go ahead and clarify real quick when he says he loves snaring rod or fish that's specifically with the snare rod snare rod. from JT. Yeah, there you go. I will say that my favorite rod and goes on every trip with me, including being packed for feck because I had some fun meme stuff I was going to do with it um, is the 30. What is it? Six inch Widowmaker from 13 fishing in a medium light. I use that for everything unless I'm using it from like for walleyes hmm. it's my favorite walleye dead stick it's my favorite panfish rod i will use that up to right goes on every trip with me if i'm on the ice when i'm in the boat it's who knows it's one of literally 28 rods in my <laughs> rod locker on any given day Well, there's a lot of people snapping me through this whole thing. Well, there you go. Look at you getting all famous. <laughs> Sounds like Brandon's trying to figure out what Roddy needs to put all that Northland tackle <laughs> on. <dude. laughs> I mean, not wrong. So one other thing that I'd like to plug right now is if you go to our Instagram in our link tree, in the bio, you will see the Fish Addictions Discord. We are working on starting a new form of a forum site where we can come together as anglers to talk about where the fish are biting, where we, you know, we can talk to each other, we can help each other through new ideas, new tips, new lakes, so on and so forth. And if you go to our Instagram bio, you will see that you'll see a link to our Discord channel, a link to our apparel um spotify apple Podcasts, if you want to catch up with the real talk as well as a link to our youtube for our episodes and so on and so forth and that would be you know the more people that we can get involved we're, what we're trying to do is we're we're trying to truly build a community of anglers that want to help each other you know and we'll we'll do the giveaways you guys don't have to worry about that <laughs> <laughs> as as you've seen if if we get if we get the people involved, we've got the giveaways covered. But we want to build a community of anglers that can look to each other, you know, because that's really what it's all about. I've I've said it before and I'll say it again. My favorite part about fishing, it's not catching the fish. It's the person that's sharing the deck of the boat with me. It's the person sitting next to me in the ice house. You know, that that's what I look forward to in fishing is the people that I can spend time with. You know, Mike is my boss and has been for almost a decade, right? Yeah, Crazy. I guess in some aspect, yeah. But we've been friends since, I don't know, probably like week two into me working for you. And Jim has... I fooled him to think I was his friend. Yeah. I mean, it worked. <laughs> that was a good friend. It worked. It worked. Jim pretended he wasn't my friend. You could have gone that route. Could have made me annoy you into friendship. <laughs> he's good at that <laughs> but but that's what it's about really is is getting people into the sport getting people involved having fun it's always been the point of fish addictions oh that's what started fish addictions from day one was just sharing the camaraderie aspect of things and we've caught a lot of flack for it over the years you know a lot of people are like well you're not a true fishing show you know we don't care like this isn't about i don't I care what everybody thinks. Obviously we're doing this giveaway because we care that people are supporting us, but the ones that aren't, that doesn't hurt me. We're, we're not for everybody. Not everybody likes fish addictions, but guess what? A lot of people do. Thank you. They do. A lot of and people like what we're doing. A lot of people like the direction we go. We want to educate. We want to entertain and we want to, we want to be out there ourselves and we get, we want, we like sharing our journeys because our journey is different than your journey. Your journey is different than anybody else's journey. We do things differently. 
and maybe we can learn from you and you can learn from us. And that's the whole thing. That's, that's what fish addictions is all about. Well, one, one, one of my favorite memories from last summer was my buddy catching like a 14 inch pike. Cause he never caught a pike before. And all he wanted to do was catch a pike. Thankfully we crossed that bridge on trip two, And I have, I didn't have to let any more pike in my boat, but you know, that's, that's the goal, right? Is to get people hooked. Get them addicted. Get people to feel the way we do. <laughs> Jesse will take you fishing. Jesse loves taking guys fishing. We like going fishing with Jesse. Uh, where was I'll take question? it. We during, can take anybody fishing. During summer like fishing, where's the best area on Devil's Lake to catch walleyes? Uh, John Nyland, are you from Ada, where I'm from? I'm pretty sure that's the same John Nyland I'm thinking of. He was a few years younger than I was in high school. Um, depends what you want. Uh, if you're looking for bigger fish, I would stay toward the east end of the lake If you or a pelican area if you're looking for main basin. That depends the time of year, you know, later in the year out in the around the main part of the lake, main bay, all that kind of stuff, or back in... I mean, always the Golden Highway, right? It's Golden Highway. You could pull across anything out there. Old shorelines. Meet bridges on Malax in the Big Bite. I mean, that could definitely... We were going to do that this this winter up at Lake of the Woods, but things have just been crazy. Like, I hope we have more of a normal winter because what you guys don't know this, but we don't plan anything. Like, we don't know where... I mean, we're planning tomorrow right now. Really? Still undecided. Yeah, <laughs> still undecided. Not only that, but we found out about Port about fort peck on friday not really not well, that well, we no, knew maybe. about it but it was i think it was decided on like last thursday that that was gonna yeah be i mean that's that's no cap like no. thursday or friday last week was when the announcement went out like hey we're trying to go to fort peck no. i mean we've been talking about it for years but finally it was like all right let's do this and now here we are i want to catch a trout in the next Two weeks so bad. How's it going, John? I thought that was probably I recognized the name for sure. So Dusty, you did not win, but you won our hearts. Oh boys. <laughs> You're a little late to the show, Dusty. We're just about to get off. Uh yes, the Fargo Ice Show is in the works for next winter. Uh things are going on as planned. We were super upset that we couldn't have it this year, but you know, obviously with everything going on, we had to make the call that was kind of uh made for us in a way you know with covid and everything like that so and, but yes fargo i show will be on for next year bigger than bigger and better and joe the the guys use all sorts of rod cases from sks to i think we're trying to find the ones to, we like the most you know i mean i've got four or five different renditions it's more about finding a rod case that fits your rod style are you a guy that likes to fish long rods shorter rods you have a mix of both um, I'm excited to say that next year, I think our problem will be solved. It's looking wink. I wink. like it. Currently, but, my rods but, are sitting in the back yeah, of my pickup. They're literally just in the back seat, buckled in. We talked about this last time. I actually forced <clears throat> me to learn the name of the rod locker that I have. Ooh, the what is it? Black Widow. The Black Widow, same one Taylor has. Yes. I like it. It seems like a good one. It is a good one. So it if takes you a haven't looking. got a rod case, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> we might know a guy. We might give one away. Uh, yeah. Might have one for sale. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Jesse. We had a guy from Africa earlier today. Is Rent also from the? Is that his name? I think Rent? Remy. It's Remy. Remy. I think that's, that's the same dude. Was it the same yeah. dude? I think so. Yeah. Remy. Also, how many rods do you break a year? Uh, that's a question I've always wanted to know from pro anglers. Uh, open water, probably five or six. Ice fishing really just depends. Do you think you try not to break any? How do you far think can if you, you broke throw it before more rods a year that you'd win more? What's that? You think you'd win more tournaments if you broke more rods? I mean, there would be a lot of times where breaking a rod would feel very good for a split second until I was upset that I broke the rod. <laughs> I, I have a pair of Oakleys laying on the bottom of the Lake of the Woods that felt real good until they hit the bottom and the muskie didn't eat. If you're doing it right, all of them. <laughs> 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 it 
Touche. John Miller is quickly becoming one of my favorite people. All right. We're down to what are we down to? I think it's time to sign off. You guys tell us if we should keep doing this stuff live every once in a while. We've been doing some live videos. It's been a it's been a really fun time interacting with all you guys. And uh, we have not hooked the Garmin up to a TV in the house yet. Have we? I haven't been there for that. I want to. My wife has the opposite opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joe, right. I, I will look out for that thank you and, and thank you guys for all again please go over and support all these guys norsk batteries northland tackle eskimo ice fishing ion garmin i mean all these guys really stepped up the plate for all you guys that that are uh supporting us to please support them so well john this summer maybe we'll have to get out sometime Nail the white bass every time, along with a few deadheads. <laughs> I have. Uh, you speak to my heart with the white bass. Like, how good is that? It's unreal. It's unreal. That's what I, you're I take, fishing. I take Jake out almost every night when we're there, and like, we'll go bang on some walleyes in like the last 15 minutes. I'm like, all right, white bass time. Are we talking like? Because like, I got onto one on Ash Nabila where they were the boil. They were boiling and yeah. breaking the surface, and yeah. I could catch them on literally anything I wanted to. I threw a DT-16 for an hour and caught a white bass on every other cast. Like, And then I tried to replicate it with a fly rod and just failed because the fish did not boil. <laughs> well, guys, I think we're going to sign out. I appreciate everything again. Thank you for everything. Thank you for supporting our show. Thank you for supporting this podcast, which we just started this year. And I hope you guys are really liking the vlogs that we've been putting out. We've been putting out a ton of content and uh, – really really enjoy it so thank you guys very much and uh we're very out much so this is fish addictions the real talk out we're signing off thank you